Welcome back to Seashorn Vlog and we're off for a walking tour around Bath. Hope you're up for some education. <laughs> Essentially, uh, as I say, in the, in the 1530s, uh, it was basically got rid of as a monastery. It's very diff been difficult to film the tour guide there because the music was so loud, but Bath Abbey behind us is very, very old, let's just say that. It's the third abbey on the site and the whole monastic order used to be huge but we're now heading around to the spa area which was done by the Georgians to the pump room and the, and the fact that I spin like a helicopter my arms you probably noticed that already it's worse when people film you and then you realize just how much your arms move around it's actually the UNESCO World Heritage Badge Bath is one of two cities in the whole wide world that is a UNESCO World Heritage City. And I know what you're thinking. What's the other one? Or, what a load of rubbish. I've been to Paris and Rome and Athens and London and... Are you telling me Bath and only one other of those is actually a World Heritage? Yeah, I am. In fact, none of those are. He is Venice. Venice. This whole area here, which we're going to explore in a second, is the original spa quarter from the Georgian area, 1790s or so. This would have been the original way in, and this gentleman here was here when the Romans were here, letting people in. <laughs> um, just behind there is that bar, a square where all the water bubbled up, so that was the original entrance. And in Georgian times, when the pump room here was open, that was all the waters you could get at from the Roman um, complex that we now know about. See what I mean? Sort of that kind of gist. All the rest was covered over. So it's still quite significant in the importance. Uh, if you've watched any films where Bath's in it, you have seen this because this is about as Georgian as you can get. All you need to do is throw a bit of straw, a bit of horse manure, maybe throw in the odd horse, and you've got yourself Georgian, Regency, whatever you want. Any of you get into Bridgerton? Yeah. Yes. Oh dear. <laughs> um, You'll recognise this as street scenes all up and down here because this is very much part of the whole setup. Um, so essentially this was 1790s and this is one end and that's the other end of the spa quarter. These colonnades were created to provide shelter for those queuing up to go to the bars at either end and to go into Primark of course. Uh, they were ahead of their time these these Georgians. Anyway, so the the tour guide was explaining about the layer cake. Now, if I remember rightly, because it's been so long now, the, the first layer is the Romans, the second layer is either the monastic or the, oh, what did I say? No, I forgot the other, the middle bit, but monastic or, or something period. Yeah, with a little bit of Roman, you said. And then, and then the top layer would be the Georgian layer. And that's what he said, basically, Bath is made up of. And did you know Bath is one of the only World Heritage cities. There's only two, and Venice is one of them. Which are the Roman two. bits are 18 feet down. Yeah, the Roman bits are 18 feet down, and I've actually been to Venice. Also, I'm, I'm glad that you finished talking because I just had to like move the camera between all of those poles. <laughs> and this is where Bridgerton's filmed. It's more about being able to get back up again, if I can do it somewhere else. Just put your hand on there, there'll be a bit of a surprise. Maybe. He's not going to get to yeah. Oh, he wasn't going to make it back up again. It's hot! Yeah. <laughs> hot. Spring. Spring. Which feeds the cross bath here. And there's another one over there which feeds the hot bath there, or the hot spring. So these three springs are essentially why baths here. And each one of the three layers of our historical layer cap respond to these waters in different ways. We've seen, you've got an idea of how the Romans did, it's a whole complex and party time. Um, and you can see the Georgians treat it with similar respect, to be honest. It's all about uh, leisure and tourism and uh, visiting and exploring and enjoying. Um, 
actually a whole event. But also, it was seen as um, being part of a day. So, um, Georgian society made this um, kind of spa treatments, health treatments, really much as part and parcel of a, a, something very special. Um, you can see it's founded in 1174. This is essentially an arms house. Uh, it was founded originally um, for the sick and the poor of Bath and the surrounding area. This was the waters from the cross spring here were used as part of a treatment or as a cure, if you know. That was the oldest part. It was very sacred water back then, rather than leisure. But we're now we're going to walk the west wall of Bath. Hope it's not long. I wear speedos. I went to the west wall of the city of Bath. Halfway was where the Irish pub was. That's Westgate Street, which imaginatively called because it led to the West Gate. See the white building down the end there, facing you? That's the east wall of the city. So you're looking down the entire north wall of the old city of Bath. So, or to put it another way round, it's absolutely tidy. You can actually do a complete lap in about 10 minutes. That would have been the original city. Uh, and, and I can be even more absolute than that. Before 1700, that's all there was. Um, the city wall was defined by the Romans and then it was a pile of stones. The Roman, this wasn't a fortress city, so we didn't really get the walls that the Romans would have done. Um, so it's, yeah, as I say, not a fortress city. And later on, you get the Game of Thrones style walls. In fact, there's a little bit there, kind of brown stain down on the left-hand side. It is a bit more of what the medieval walls would have looked like. These would have been added later. Um, the Romans simply used it as a boundary for Bath suddenly exploding in terms of population, in terms of architecture and in terms of its status around this country. Uh, his name was Richard Bonash. It's about this high, about this wide. Um, descriptions of him and paintings of him suggest that he was not a particularly handsome man. He'd gone to Oxford to study law and had been thrown out after a year big set pieces that we're going to visit. An architect called John Wood the Elder uh, persuaded the owner of this land, this open grassland, pasture land, cattle, sheep, that sort of idea, to lease it to him for 99 years. And what he was going to do was to build a palace fit for these people that were coming here uh, in increasing numbers in the early 1700s. We're talking 1730 that this was built. And during the 1730s, it was closed off. That, behind the trees there, I do try and get them to knock it down, but they just won't listen. I'm trying to be helpful. Um, but behind there is the palace that he built. This is the back Compared of the palace. Compared to the very grand front. Now, I'm going to get all technical on you here. Here in Bath, technically, this is referred to as Queen Anne front, Mary Anne behind. You are looking at the Mary Anne behind. Well, the back of the palace is actually not a palace. It's actually townhouses that were made up by different, different builders. Which is why it looks a mess. Just the, exactly. And each builder could do whatever they wanted. So some buildings are bigger and some buildings are smaller. As long as the front look good. Yeah, exactly. Well, now, wouldn't it be Victoria Parks? And up Royal Avenue to Royal Crescent. I'd recommend this tour. We'd booked it through Get Your Guide, £15 each. Been very interesting so far. And I'm excited to learn more. Especially some more scenes of where Bridgerton was filmed. Jane Austen films, that kind of thing. Recommend it. It's been a talk for a while. Bloody ages. Or an ice cream? It's got an end at the end, mate. We just walk, walked through Royal Victoria Park, which was added about 100 years after this bit that we're going to look at now by Queen Victoria. Behind me is the Gravel Walk, famous in Jane Austen films. And that's where, from here, which was really far out of the city centre, they'd do a shortcut into the, into the centre for their bath experience. This is spectacular. It's uh, spectacular in pretty much every way, shape or form. 
architecturally it is right out there at the sharp and pointed end of Georgian architecture, neoclassical architecture. It's the first crescent in Europe. It was built in the 1760s through to the early 1770s by John Wood the Younger, that son of John Wood the Elder, uh, and there's a joint project we'll see in just a moment behind a halfway house. 1760s into the early 1770s. It took eight years to build, which actually, when you see the sheer scale of it, is amazing, really. It's almost like scale of a cathedral. Remember, you haven't got diggers and tractors and other forms of art. This is hard graph. Um, most are broken down into flats. Yeah, to, to a point, yes. Yeah, probably two rooms deep. And of course, they've added things on in a lot of cases. But it's quite impressive, isn't it? It is substantial. But, um, neoclassical, of course, is a shame. Royal Crescent's fantastic, really. Um, all the sturdy houses there, all looks the same on the front, a little bit different on the back, same as the last place. Basements go under the road, that's where all the kitchen, the celery, and all the rest of it. Celery, cellar is. <laughs> Number one's a museum, that was the Bridgerton House, which we didn't get from the tour guide, but it was. It's a museum now, you can go in there, it's all set out like it was originally when it was originally made. And all the very, very rich people would live there and then they'd get in the chair seat, chair taxis, take them in the centre. In the bath. We're heading to the circus now. Got those houses, most recent one, sold for 11 and a half million. And then they complained they couldn't do anything to it because it's grade one listed. Can't change the outside or the inside. I wouldn't mind. And did you know that in the middle is now a hotel? They've used three, of the, three or four of the townhouses and made it into the Royal Hotel, which is where the Bridgerton Everything in Bath is built out the same stone. That's why it looks uniform and that's why it is World Heritage Site, World Heritage City. Because everything looks the same, uses the same stone, built with the same architecture, has the same style. You cannot really change it. You've got to be very clever without lots of, lots of omissions. Went to the circus. So we've got the palace and, the, and, and Queen Square down there, then this, then that, in terms of time off. This... ...the elder who did the palace, but completed by his son who did the, the present there. And basically he died during the process of it doing, but my goodness me, he had stacked up. He had very clearly knew what he was trying to achieve here. Um, to put this one crudely, this is 33 townhouses. 33 ways of making large amounts of money in Airbnbs. But it's got to be more than that, just looking at it. There's got to be cheaper ways of doing that and still coming up with something quite nice. He's on a mission when he builds this, in so many ways. Um, let's, uh, let's kind of give you some ideas as to what I mean. It's neoclassical, of course it is. You can tell by the pillars and things. In fact, He's referencing a lot here. So for those of you who know about neoclassical or uh, classical architecture, there are three orders, and there they are on these tiers. Doric, Ionic, Corinthian. He's done it because he's just showing up. Um, it's meant, if you unpeel this, wrap it around a cake tin, the outside of it all, you're looking at the Colosseum in Rome. This is what he's referencing, the, all the tiers up the side of that. So all of this is his idea of going back to the basics of architecture, which was classical. This is the back of those houses on the circus. The mirror. This side? The ballroom. The whole thing is the ballroom. It is vast. Uh, a public ball. About 600 people. And Of course, uh, you Bridgeton fans will recognise us as Lady Danbury's house, of course. Uh, it's never been a country house. Uh, it started life as the Sydney Gardens Hotel, uh, which was access to the Sydney Gardens behind. If you've not been down there, it's now the Hobo Museum. It's got a lot of those treasures we were talking about. And also a film set. Vanity this is Bear, Pulteney is Bridge. Uh, we'll just wide. cut and a little way along here. And, uh, if you've not Yes, Avon. Uh, and there's, yeah, that's not the same Avon, of course. There's nine of them for the reason you've just pulled out there. 
that the Celtic or Welsh uh, Gaelic for river is Afon. There's nine of them because basically river, river. I've got this vision of when like when the Romans rocked up here and the Celts are a bit unhappy that they turned up and they said, uh, hello my man, what do you call this then, river? River, river anyway. Pulteney Bridge is only one of four bridges in the world that have shops on both sides. And this is a weir, which I've just found out, which helps the flow of the water because the spars dump lots in there and it floods. That's where a lot of the water comes out from the from the Roma Rat and from the spa. And it merges into the river. It makes it very warm. These are the parade gardens and yes, people paraded. Look at my daughter. Look at my mat. The tour is now over. Very good. Well worth doing. If you come in the bath, do the tour. I'll leave a link down below. That, that, that parade, that was set up for Covent Garden um, in Bridgerton. And also, you should recognise this shop. Because it was in almost every episode. Obviously not called the Abbey Deli though. We're now going to Brown's to get some food. And Brown's is in Bath's original police station. Or one of them. And the toilets are in the cells. That was the dress shop. We're in Browns. Beef croquettes. Thank you very much. I asked for a small salad because I'm not hungry. Because I'm never hungry. Fish and chips. Uh, and fish and chips. Do you like, um, Look at that chips batter. Do you want a Can I have a roast? Oh, a, a grilled lemon. Look at the batter on that fish. I think Amazing. this is the fish and chips side, apart from the girl over there. Yeah. Yeah. And Sean has. What have you got? Oh, he's got chicken on the board. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. What kind of chicken on the board is it? Lemon. Lemon chicken. That's easy. Enjoy the hot days, but not mushy days. Yeah. Enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> is it got an inscription? That obelisk was built by the little Welsh guy who was ugly. <laughs> because, yeah, this is why people, rich people, love coming to Bath. Because the little Welsh guy who was ugly made all the rules for high society. And if you didn't follow them, you weren't in high society. You didn't get included. And if you were really rich, he'd build you monuments like that. So Phil said. And rich people loved it. So Phil the tour Phil guy, the tour guy told us that. Browns, lovely. The toilets really were like cells, with like cell doors and stuff. I've had a really nice day in Bath. I'll come back here someday. And that walking tour was really, really good value and I'd highly recommend that. We are now, have a bit of a drive. We're heading to our Airbnb, which we're in for a few days. So you'll see that in a future vlog. Keep making memories. Catch you later. <laughs> <laughs>